Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews, the online show where we dive into the municipal insights of political leaders from across Canada. Our mission on this show is quite simple. Shine a light on the dedicated individuals who day in and day out work around the council table to shape the communities that they call home. Joining us for today's episode is from the RM of Sifton, Manitoba, Councillor Scott Phillips. Wholesome, friendly, hospitality, fun events, and adventure awaits, all within a picturesque landscape of rolling sand hills and the Assiniboine River Valley, located on Highway 1, only 15 minutes east of Verdon and 30 minutes west of Brandon, Manitoba. The Arm of Sifton has much to offer families and visitors alike. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Recording. Okay, all three are recording. Let's do this. Okay. Counselor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by getting to know the man behind the persona a little bit, if you don't mind. And I've got to ask a simple question, but it's an important one for this show. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? Well, you basically said it was bred into me, you could say, you know, when you got parents that were very involved in the communities over the years and you grow up in that environment. And you get involved in a young age, you see the uh, importance of volunteering, whether it's on a committee or a park or a sports team. Uh, you know, people don't volunteer. These things will uh, die out. And it just was, a, you know, like I said, born into me. And it's been a very important part of my life. And I hope to continue that as long as I can. Well, what was it about the political draw? Because you, you just said you could have gone through volunteerism. You could have given through back through nonprofits. But you chose political to give back as well. What was it about the political realm that drew you to it? Well, again, like I said, it was kind of born into me. My father was a municipal assessor for 30 plus years, great municipal friends and uh, CAOs of the province. And, you know, you get into that realm of meeting those uh, individuals at the house and that. And, and he always, you know, they were saying if someone needs to make a difference, well, someone's got to step up and do it well. In 2010, I, I stepped up and did it. And I got elected in and uh, there's been no turning back. I've enjoyed every minute. It's uh you know, it's uh, not for everybody, but uh, I jumped in with both feet right from day one. And uh, Lord knows I'm in with both feet and up to my neck. And it's, I love it. So 14 years later, after uh, many re-election uh, times, uh, many elections that come and gone, it, it, do you look back on it and look back on where the RM was originally when you first were elected to where it is today and say, you know what, we have made significant gains and I'm so proud that I was be, was able to be around that council table and help make those changes to make a better community for all of us. Well, most definitely. Yeah. You know, uh, we're a low laying uh, RM. So our my first few years on council, we were just bombarded with flooding issues. And dealing with uh, DFA and all that, so we had a good Reeve at the time, who's uh, long, who's passed, God rest his soul. But he was a he was an inspiration for uh, showing the importance of working with upper levels of government and and patience, but being persistent and uh, getting things done. And since then, we've developed communities. We've had uh, the assessment offices actually acknowledged our area of the provinces. Where is this area? Because there's a lot of new houses and and expensive houses coming in. People are returning home to work for the oil industry or farm. Uh, we've got a brand new daycare in Oak Lake that was uh, proud to be part of uh, initiating to get into the RM. Uh, we've got businesses opening up. We've got uh, a lot of community parks. Our Oak Lake Beach has taken off. There's uh, some beautiful homes out there, and we're being built as we speak. You know, we're we just got, we have a thriving RM. Uh, the population is around twelve, thirteen hundred people, but uh, in the summertime that flourishes at the two resorts. You know, up to that seven, eight thousand mark, and it's a uh, so we're very fortunate that way. You've probably come to the realization after 14 years in office that 
you have to make some very tough decisions around that council table. And some of those tough decisions means that people are not going to be happy with those decisions that you make. How do you make your decisions best based on the best interest of your entire community, knowing that people sometimes just may not be happy with what you decide? Well, we're very fortunate. We've, there's always a few naysayers out there, but uh, like myself, you know, I try to educate myself on the topic well in advance, weigh out the pros and cons. And, you know, there's a lot of nights you sit in the office to midnight, one o'clock in the morning researching stuff. And also talking to neighbor RMs and uh, other municipal colleagues around the province and what worked for them and what didn't work. So, you you know, you like you said, you educate yourself and you base it on history and stats and, and just search it uh, and just ask yourself, is this what you think is best for your municipality? Because they voted you in. To make these decisions so you got to just take your time and uh and, and be prepared and then be ready to make the best decision and stand by it and if you don't stand by it and it still passes you got to support the decision of the council and that's important uh, you, you see that some places where there's a that doesn't happen but that is so important that uh, you're, you're as a team whether you agree or not it's a it's a the majority wins and it's the way to go how important is it for you when you make that decision to communicate to the people? Because you are the closest to the people. You are the one on the grounds. And I, I, I'm kind of throwing in a weird question here, but I got to ask it because they'll probably know you more than they know their MLA or their MP because they probably see you more often than they see their MLA or MP. So how important is it for you to communicate those decisions that you make to the people who agree with you and also to the ones who disagree with you? Well, for starters, I think uh, municipal politics is the best level of government. We are the grassroots blue collar individuals that uh, we're at the Napa store. We're at the chicken chef. We're in the snake pit. You know, we're at the church suppers. We're at all these things. Uh, and as I probably go a little overboard with uh, transparency, and I've preached that right from day one. It was uh, actually some other councillors in the area. If you quit doing this, what I do is at the end of council meetings, in my direct ward, uh, I send out an update. Here's the big checks that went through. Here's the big decisions that went through. Here's what the bylaws were, the resolutions. Here's what we uh, we did. We I sum it all up. I sum up our minutes in in an email. So my my immediate electoral is is up to date exactly what's going on in the municipality with from building permits to uh, new wells and, and everything and so it's and decisions it's uh, it's important to keep the rate payers because it's their dollars that are paying for all this and uh, and uh, you know some of it's not directly in our southwest part of the rm but it's uh, it benefits everybody from the lagoon to water to the daycare and everything so it's important for the, the rate payers to know exactly what's going on do you get a sense that the people of the rm or even of oakwood are in, engaged in what's going on in your community because i would say and i i, I paint a broad stroke when i ask this question that there's an apathy when it comes to what's going on at City Hall or Town Hall or RM Hall today compared to what it was like 20 years ago. Do you get a sense that people, as long as my taxes are are low and the water is good, I'm comfortable with what's going on at City Hall? Or do you get a sense that people want to actually engage with you? A lot do. And uh, you can credit the pros and cons of social media to that. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, there is a lot like... uh, like I built a gas station and uh, we had a very large coffee crowd. Well, that's where you can usually filter out some of the stuff, but it was important to set the record straight a lot of time. Like I'd put down the financials, I'd put down the budget, I'd put down a copy of the minutes and say, here's, here's exactly what's going on. You know, this is where your money's going. This is the decision being made. So a lot of people got more engaged. And uh, like I said, I, I pushed the knowledge on the, on the rate pairs. Hey, you know, like we've got a lot of good things. Look at our fire department. We've spent a lot of money on there and we've got a really top notch fire department. And that's thanks to you guys as the rate payers and you know we're grateful for that because we hope we never need it but what we do we got to be thankful that we've got it and just so much thing other things like uh, economic development we're, we're stepping that up a little bit our rink in oak lake is second to none it's very popular uh the oak lake fair is by far one of the best in rural manitoba in all of manitoba it's the end of the milk run and hundreds and hundreds of people come out so there's a lot of great things that go on and the rate payers need to realize that it's a it's not just a gravel on a road in the spring great at the sometimes and then it's done and so there's a lot that goes on to make the darn go around on, on that note of engagement when you do engage and when do when people when residents do engage with you do you get a sense that they understand that they need to talk to you about municipal issues or are they talking to you about provincial and federal issues as well because i i see a blurring of those jurisdictional lines within canada of 
Uh, I will talk to my uh, our my my counselor about healthcare, even though healthcare is not a prevent, uh, municipal issue. I will talk to my counselor about education, even though it's not a municipal issue. Do you get a sense that they will only talk to you about municipal issues, or are you willing to engage with conversations about jurisdictional issues that aren't in your realm? Oh yeah, it has definitely been blurred. There's been a lot of uh, downloading from the government over the years, and uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, and I've been fortunate enough to be put on some provincial uh, appointees on some committees. So the, the individuals, whether it's in my municipality or neighbor's municipality or, or one seven over, uh, they call all the time. Uh, there's there's not a day go by that the phone doesn't ring. I, I lose track on uh, rural issues directly within the municipality of Sifton and then neighbor municipalities and uh, whether it's health or justice or MIT, it, uh, it all it all is a fact. We have to advocate politely on on these things. We've got to work together. Whether it's Highway 83, 34, 5, 2, you know, 10, and the province needs to know that uh, we're all on this together. And uh, but yeah, the uh, the ratepayers the other day at the, I was getting fueled. We we're just we we're talking about the state of highways and the budgets, and you know that's a provincial highway through a, a municipality. But we're talking about it because that's a main artery and and what's being done and stuff like that. Eh? And it's so yeah, you you're always going to talk about. It was always the Trudeau conversations too, and all that. But that's what a, that's in little, rural Canada Trudeau comes up on yeah, a regular basis. Yeah, that's, a, that's a little above my pay grade that subject, but it's uh, it's always brought up too. And uh, and then of course it's it's no secret that I've got a really great relationship with the past provincial government and the great uh, relationship with the current government. So they always ask what's new down on Broadway. And in fact, I'm going there after this interview today. So it's a uh, you know, we're very lucky. I'm very lucky and fortunate to have these relationships with the uh, the provincial MLAs and ministers uh, over the years to, uh, to stay engaged and keep in the loop. Well, I, I appreciate you taking time to do this interview before that meeting. Um, but I want to turn to the arm as a whole, because I feel like that's where the big crux of this interview is going to be based in. And I want to start by prefacing this line of questioning by saying this. This is a conversation between the councillor and myself. This is not a motion of council. This is not a direction of council. This is not even a policy of council. This is the councillor's opinion. It may yep. line up with what's going on and what's being voted on at council. But at the end of the day, it is only his opinion. With that being said, Councillor, in your opinion, what do you believe is the biggest issue or issues facing the RM of Sifton today as of recording this in middle of October 2024? Yeah, yeah my personal opinion is uh, we need to get rural water into the town. We rely on wells and sand points, and that's not a selling feature to uh, someone from the, an urban area looking to, to relax in a small town. It's doable. It's great water, but it's just, it's just not, uh, we have to work with all levels of government to get rural water into the town of Oak Lake and explore options to get it to the beach. It's, it's not a cheap venture. We've, we've had some studies done, but it's, this process has taken way too long years. In fact, uh, feet are being dragged. You can blame COVID if you wish. I, I choose not to. It's just, it's not being done and we need to, uh, we need to get this uh, in place. So, okay. So that there's a, there's a multifaceted line of questions that I can ask about this. And I want yeah. to start with this question. Water is the, probably one of the biggest resources that a lot of municipalities are trying to figure out the solution to as of yep. this recording. And I say that respectfully across this great pro country. Manitoba is known as the province of many lakes and it does have many lakes. What can the province and the municipality, the RM do today to address this issue? So you aren't talking about this five years from now, because it sounds like in that last question, the last answer this is not a this is not a topic that just sprung up overnight. It's been something that's been dragging on. Yeah. Well, part of the problem is uh, on the provincial end, there's been staff changes in this department, so files get shuffled and all that. And we just need to my my thoughts are we need to go back to to first base and say, okay, this is what we need. How can we achieve it? And how can we work together? What are the funding opportunities? What are the timelines? What are the expectations? And how is the best way to do it? Where should we put a water plant? You know, it's uh, we we've explored tapping into uh, water co-ops to the neighbors to the east. They're maxed out. We don't think that's viable with their their population demands. So we're like, what can we do in our RM? And I think we need to start back at, at level one and have a community engagement. Exactly what's going to go on. Uh, get all the you know the myths figured out. And here's the facts. And here's what can be done. So what are the facts around this issue? Because. It, it... <laughs> 
the co-ops are great and understandable that every other municipality in the surrounding area is tapped out on their water maxes and the allowance that they can give. What can the RM do locally besides going back to square one today to sort of address this issue? Because I can imagine this is stalling potential home growth. This is stalling potential business growth. And this is stalling potential economic growth of your community, is it not? A little bit, but we're lucky because we have uh, some developers in the town of Oak Lake and at the beach that are they're building. Like uh, we we are yeah. seeing uh, dwellings go up, so we're very fortunate that uh, we've got an energetic uh, community development board that's uh, doing their best to to grow. But the, yeah, you're right; it it, it can hold up potential uh, large commercial developments. There's no doubt about it, and uh, multi-block uh, residents. But what also holds up is the street pave. You know, like we need streets done in Oak Lake in the worst way. Uh, the, the our our local staff has done a wonderful job. Uh, MTI has done some work in the town, but if we're going to do a complete overlap of the streets, you got to put your water in first because you want to dig up your streets after. So there's a you know there's a, a scenario there that we have to overcome, and uh, and there's funding out there right now to do streets, but we'd like to do them, but we don't have the water in yet. So or the sewer, like you know, so it's. Do you do it and then you're not, you know, the chance of ripping it up and not have the same. So it's it's kind of holding us back. The water's holding us back, in my opinion, on, on a lot of future developments and uh, infrastructure improvements. Is it basically the chicken and the egg story? Because you can't have development without water and you can't have water without development because you can't add water lines or increase property taxes to address these shortfalls without the potential growth in place to say, okay, we're going to do this growth today, which is going to come on the backs of residents. But we're the payoff in five years when future growth comes here is going to be great. Is that hard to balance? Well, I think you, you got to sell it. Like if, if I could have access to rural water, I would be all over it. It would increase the assessment of your house. You wouldn't have to worry about a whole lot of pumps going wrong, sand points going dry, pulling sand points. So there's a lot of selling features to it, but we are blessed. We are on the Oak Lake Aquifer. And we have an abundance of water. There are some parts of the aquifer that's a little uh, high in iron and all that, but you know, it's, you live with it, you survive with it. But if you had rural treated water in, in, offered in your community, especially where we, the, Oak, the town of Oak Lake is situated between Verdon and Brandon on Highway 1 with the new daycare and, and Tundra Oil and Gas, we are in an ideal location to really grow. And uh, I think the water would, would push us over that top. Looking at the macro issue of water, I can imagine, and I was, and I say this knowing the answer already, because I was in Oak Lake earlier this summer. Actually, I was touring through Manitoba and I stopped in and I wanted to just stop in because I we met at AMM last year and I said I would stop in. Didn't have my phone with me, so I wasn't able to give you a call and say, let's meet up for a coffee. But I will be back later on this summer, actually this winter and then potentially next summer as well. Um when I was there, I was asking people, because I'm one of those nosy people who likes to randomly start up conversations <laughs> with locals, and I was asking people what their issue is. Water wasn't the top of mind for a lot of people. It it was discussed probably once, I think, out of the about 15 conversations I had, but I heard a lot of micro issues. We need more diverse development of businesses. We need more policing in our rural areas. How does council and you balance those macro issues with those small micro issues that people want addressed with their property tax dollars that they're uh, sending to the municipality to utilize to afford and pay for things? Well, you just, you blend it. You, you take it as it comes. Uh, policing, for example, that's uh that's an issue that we really don't have control over. We can advocate and lobby, and we've got a we've got a request in to meet with Minister Weeb at AMM with the uh, Blue Hills Detachment to try to figure this out because now Riverdale is part take, taken in the Blue Hills, so they're stretched way too too thin. Um, I don't know the answers to uh, the policing. It's uh, it's so frustrating. Uh, there's there's so many things I'd like to see done, and uh, <laughs> and the RCMP have got the utmost respect from all of us and. They've got a tough job and uh, we respect what they do, but there's not enough of them. And uh, for an individual to get out the next day with a slap on the wrist after a, an officer spent 10 hours on paperwork, you know, it's, I feel for them. As far as uh, other issues, 
But is it hard to nope. balance those? Because you have to make some very tough decisions, which we talked about in the first segment. And you have to say, okay, this this is a priority for this year. And your priority, John, may not be a priority until next year because we won't have the funding to address it. Is it hard to make those decisions where you're basically in some way saying no, not this year to some residents? Uh, for me personally, no, it's not hard to balance or, or because uh, – like I'd love to have every road gravel in the RM. It just it financially cannot be done. You know, we're 18 miles by 18 miles. Uh, there are high traffic roads that need graveling every year or two and three years. And then there's secondary roads that, you know, maybe needed every three or four years. So it's a, there's a method to the madness on how we do things. But saying that road over here might be important to John, but it's not important to Jim. And Jim's road might be important to Jim and not to John's. So you have to just take it all in stride and, and do it as strategically as you can and justify why things are done in 24, 25. This is the plan for 26. This is what we did in 22 and 23. We'll revisit it in 27. You know, there's a there's a method to it. And uh, I'd like to think that there are, our municipality is extremely transparent and and we're quite open on how we do stuff and how procedures are done. And uh, But anytime I've had ratepayers text me at 6 in the morning, 6 at night, uh, talking about stuff and I, I'll go, I'll go do it right. I'll look at it right then and there. I, cause it's important to them. They voted us in. So it's important to me to go follow up. Is it, is it important for yourself and even this council as a whole uh, to be proactive on issues rather than reactive yet again, some things you have to be reactive, like a big flood is going to happen. Yep. You don't, you don't prepare for that, but you, I'm assuming now you have prepared for any situation, but is yep. it to, is it better to be proactive on issues so it doesn't get worse off for residents and you're, you can say we are looking into this rather than, Oh, we will look into this. Almost definitely. We are, uh, being proactive, I'll refer to our, our reserves for equipment replacement and, and other stuff. We put we put an allotment away every year because, well, the price of that stuff just escalates to the roof. So you have to be proactive and be prepared. You have to have a solid budget and plan for a, an engine going in a grader or a work truck going down, you know, unforeseen. But if you can prepare for it and be proactive and have the surplus there, that's not a huge burden. And also proactive, like the guys are out right now with a nice fall. They're, you know, they're cleaning up around culverts. They're they're removing trees. They're building up the, the back roads. You know, getting ready and and preparing for winter. So our our staff uh, outside, I'll, I'll I'll specify, are doing a wonderful job being proactive, getting ready for winter. All the summer stuffs put away. The mowers are all cleaned up, ready to go next year. The augers, you know, the the pumps are. They'll be working on the pumps this winter in case we need them in the spring. Signs are being replaced as we speak. You know, like they got knocked down over the years from whatever uh, the wind took a toll on some signs the other day. So I know the guys are out today getting stuff up. So we got a pretty proactive council, I think. Yeah. So I want to flip the original question about the challenges that minis your municipality has and flip it on its head and say, what's the thing that you're proud of when it comes to the RM? When you look at the challenges, you can say, yes, we do have our challenges, which every municipality does, but we have this going for us. We have X going for us. What's that X factor that the RM has going for it that you look at and you say, you know what, I'm proud that we have this. Well, the thing I'm proud of is uh, RM treats each other like family. The rate payers, you know, up at the beach, uh, they've got a group, great group. They we, they act like family down in the south, on the east and the west. You know, our little communities of Grizzle and Delo. You know, we we treat each other like family. We're a friendly, friendly municipality. If there's something going on, whether it's a fire or a a funeral or, or a, a community event, it is supported from corner to corner. Uh, we are a very welcoming, friendly, fun municipality with, you know, a great hub in Oak Lake uh, with with the, the rink and the co-op. And, you know, like we are very fortunate to have the services and the uh, entities that we have. I want, okay, I'm cautious of time here because I know you have to hit the road and I'm hoping to get another segment in after oh, this yeah. interview, if you don't Ask mind. Away. Okay, I want to talk about tourism for a second. And it's important to me because I think tourism is a good economic driver that is often not talked about. What is a good what is a good tourist destination or a hidden gem within the RM, the rural municipality, that you wish people knew about more and you wish people came to all across Canada to see in the rural municipality of Sipton? Well, it's a hidden gem, but it's a well-known gem is Oak Island Resort. Our golf, the golf course out there is in the top handful of the province. They've got a wonderful staff. They've got a great clubhouse. 
The fairways are amazing. The scenery is amazing. I don't know how many times, Chris, I've sat in the, in the lounge there to have lunch or a meeting or whatever, and the people are just breathtaking by the scenery and they ask where I'm from. I'm like, well, just on the other side of that slough. You know, it's, uh, I see it every day, so I, I don't take it for granted, but I do take it for granted because it's we live in a great place. Uh, Oak Lake is a, is a huge body of water uh, with no obstacles in it. We don't get any. There's no boulders. There's no trees. So it's a very good recreation lake. Uh, I personally have worked very hard the last uh, two or three years now on the fifth grants. Uh, last year, we qualified for uh, about an $80,000 spawning bed. So we're going to be putting that in this winter for the walleye. And uh, our letter of interest was accepted. Now we're working on the application this year for proper uh, aeration in the lake to help with the LJ blooms and oxygen levels. Our lake is, it takes up a great big area of our municipality, but it is just such a treasure and a treat. The campground is full. The mini golf course is rocking. The farmer's markets out there are second to none. There's hiking trails, the dam, the fishing. There's skidoo trails, there's boating, there's kayaking. We've got skidoo trails to the whole municipality in the wintertime with ideal ice fishing. And it's We really are a one-stop tour shop. Where's the spot in the community that you can go? After a long day, after a stressful day of council meetings, of doing your regular job, is there a community, spot in the community you can just go and decompress after a long day? And I'm going to hold your feet to the fire here and say, you can't pick your own house because a lot of oh, municipal wow. councillors love to say that. But where in the community do you go to just let it all go and recenter yourself? Well, that's going to be a hard to answer because when I do have a, a long day, whether it's at work or at a meeting or at a subcommittee meeting, I look forward to getting home. And you know, when there, there's no better stress relief when the dog comes running down the lane to say hi to you because he doesn't care how bad your day was or how good your day was. He's happy to see you. So as soon as I pull in my lane, that's my that's my my go to is uh, that's when all the gray hair and all that's worthwhile. You know, it's uh, but as you know, it's uh, I enjoy it after a long day's meeting to when I own the, the gas station to to go in there and and talk to the rate payers and see what's new in their day and how was their day, you know, and engage with them and throw it back on them and ask, you know, what's, what's new and great in your world today and, and uh, go down that way. But yeah, you know, as far as going out after meeting, you know, there's, there's stuff to do at home. So it's, it's good to get home. And uh, so I didn't quite answer your question, but uh Oh, you answered no it in more ways than the, than you think, because that dog quote is probably the best quote I've ever heard. It is true. Once you, the dog doesn't care and you see that dog and you're just happy, you just recenter yourself just even looking at that puppy size. That's just my own personal opinion yeah. as a dog owner. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to ask one last question, and it's a million dollar question in this part of the show. And it's the... What makes the rural municipality of Sifton such a unique place to live, work, and raise a family? Well, I believe we have a very safe community. We've got uh, great uh, crime watch programs. We watch out for each other. We treat each other with respect. Uh, like I said, we've got the new daycare that's opening up this fall. There was a great committee, and I said, so guys, I'm, I'm very proud to, to uh, help initiate that. Uh, we're halfway between Verdon and Brandon on the Trans Canada. Uh, we've got excellent employment opportunities in the oil uh, sector, and uh, we are just kind of, I don't want to steal another municipality's line, but we are the center of it all. You know, we're so close to everywhere. In the south, we can go to Surus, West, and Hartney. The north, we can go to Kenton, Brandon, Verdon. You know, we're we're lucky that we are, we're kind of a home. We're home base. You know, I don't call us a bedroom community, but there is a lot of people that uh, drive elsewhere, and it's ideal for that. The, the school is excellent. They've got excellent teachers and administrative. The sports in, in Oak Lake with the curling and the, the kids' ball and the minor hockey, it's just second to none. There's a skateboard park. There's it's a safe. There's a nice golf course in the town of Oak Lake. Uh, you know, it's it's just the kids can go out, whether it's at the low down at our area, at our park, we've got playground facilities and ball diamonds and soccer pitches. The kids can, the parents know the kids are safe. And, you know, we watch out for each other. Grizzled's got a good little community over there, too. We're just very fortunate that uh, our area looks after each other. And uh, I just can't say enough about the great rate payers in the Arma Sifton. It's, uh, they make you feel welcome, whether you're, like I said, whether you're at the co-op getting milk, or if you're at a meat draw donating, or you're out at the rink, or if you're just, you see them at the parts store. It's, uh, it's just everyone just is so welcoming here and makes other people feel welcome, and it's a great place to live.
I, I will echo that sentiment because when I was passing through and I, I I had an Alberta license plate on my car and I drove in, I had a few people turn their head and go, who is this person? And I had a few people come up to me and say, oh, what brings you to our community? And uh, I, I felt like I was home, even though I was two provinces away from being home. So you paint a great picture there that it is a very welcoming and family friendly community that you just walk in and you feel like you you're going back to Thanksgiving dinner a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a, the, the people in the town of Oak Lake and at the beach, I grew up at the beach. So it's a, I'm small to have a lot of friends out there still. It's just, you just, you just feel welcome wherever you go. Or I do. And I know that uh, anyone that I bring in the municipality, it's, you know, somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. And it's just, a, it's a small world. It's a welcoming area. Well, Councillor, I want to thank you so much for sitting down and doing this interview. This is a great introduction of the RM. I'm looking forward to getting back and visiting. And hopefully this time when I'm back, we can actually grab a coffee and we can yep. actually uh, uh, visit some of these uh, tourist spots that you talked about, especially the lake, because uh, I didn't take it in its full beauty while I was there this summer. Yeah, you know, we were very fortunate. We had the, the premier of the province, Wab Canoe, out uh, a couple months ago to show them the lake firsthand and down to the dam and the beach. And other delegates, uh, we had uh, different municipalities, about 14 different municipalities joined us up at the golf course for a, an off the cuff chat with the premier on local issues. And uh, so we've got a, we, yeah, we're sitting on a gold mine out here and uh, we just, uh, we're happy to have it. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Cross Border Interviews. Now, we hope you've enjoyed today's conversation with Councillor Scott Phillips, one of Canada's municipal leaders who is truly making a difference within their own communities. If you want to learn more about the rural municipality of Sifton, visit their website in the show notes. If you haven't already, be sure to also hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upcoming episode. Your support and your subscriptions help us to continue to grow and bring you more important conversations like you heard today. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here, Cross Border Interviews. Till then.